Hello, it's Steve here uh, from Mad About Hoovers. I, um, I'm making this video because I haven't made one for quite some time. I think it was uh, way back last year I did my last one on uh, my vacuum cleaners. Um, now, I know I'm still active on YouTube and I comment on quite a few people's videos now. Um, but I was just uh, thinking, well I might as well make a video of um, my current collection as it is at the moment. I don't um, collect any more currently because I've got so many in the house at the moment. No, it might not look like it when we go downstairs, but I've got about 47 vacuum cleaners in the house at the moment. So this video, I'm going to try and show you all of them. Uh, so I'm going to take the camera around the house, even up in the loft, and uh, show you what ones I've got. Because some of them that you might see up there, I probably wouldn't have done a video on before. So. I'll make this uh, a reasonably quick video that uh, we're just going to go around and, and see everything that I've got. And uh, I'll just make a mention to Vacuum Tests and uh, Beko 1987. Uh, love your channel, love commenting on it. Oh, and Hoover Lux as well. Hoover Lux, you're fantastic. Everything you do, absolutely wonderful. Love commenting on your channel. I love your uh, stripping down videos as well when you um, take everything to pieces and put it all back together. Same for you, uh, Sam Watson, so as I mentioned for you as well. So, let's get going then. Right, well, I'm in the kitchen at first, so I might as well just show the kitchen appliances I've got. It's, uh, I've got this uh, LG washing machine, which is just finishing off a cycle at the moment, and that's uh, just uh, going beep. If you can just hear it now, because it's finished its cycle. Uh, that I bought in 2006. It's a uh, WM14225FD, and I've had absolutely no trouble with it at all. It's the 1400 spin direct drive. That's my um, tumble dryer. It's a Hoover Dynamic Mega, which I just bought this year because my old one packed up. I'm probably going to do a video review on this tumble dryer in, uh, in a short while. Um, that's my dishwasher there, which is a Bosch XL. I hardly ever use that now because I seem to do all my washing up in the sink. I can't be bothered waiting for a tumble dryer, it's not a tumble dryer, a dishwasher anymore. But uh, that again is 11 years old and all the time I've had it, never been a problem. All nice and clean in there. Great uh, dishwasher that. Right, so let's go into the uh, living room here. And what's the first two that we come across? Ah, two Kirby's, look. These are my um, daily drivers at the moment because uh, like uh, Sam Watson was having a, a direct air, I think he was having a direct air vacuum for his vacuum of the month and I decided I'd do the same. So these are two of the ones that I uh, currently use. One of them's the uh, Kirby Heritage one with the red bag on the side. And this one here is my um, Kirby Ultimate G. And there you can see it there. And that's got the HEPA bag in the side. Uh, that one there was an absolute wreck when I first had it, but uh, I've done my best to try and polish it and make it as nice looking as I possibly can. It's, uh, it's a nice machine that is, Heritage one. Then we go on uh, around the living room here. I've only got four down here at the moment. Oh, now what's this at the corner? This is a uh, Hoover Senior, this one. I'm not sure whether I've done a video on this particular one before, but uh, this is again another dirty fan cleaner that I had to uh, basically do it up from scratch. And that's uh, got the non-original bag on the back. And uh, it's got a, uh, I don't know whether the cable's original, but the plug might be. Again, it's an old Jira plug, rubber plug on there. I uh, put a headlight in this one because originally it didn't have a headlight in. Uh, this one's a 6525C from 1974, this one is, so it's quite late. Um, I had to put the bulb holder in out of one of my other seniors, which don't work very well, so this one's now got a headlight in. I might do a, uh, a review on that one uh, a bit later on. Let's put that back. Right down here. We have, uh, this is my above floor cleaner, when I use my direct air cleaners. This one's had a review before, uh, this one's the uh, Miele S8, the uh, S8 Medicare this one is. Uh, very, very good. I absolutely love this S8 machine. It's uh, only a standard machine, but as I say, I've done a review on this one before, so that's on the channel. Now we're going to go upstairs now to the... Uh, I only live in a very small house, you see, so this is the vacuum room. It's a bit of a mess in here, uh, but this is where I um, 
keep some of my vacuum cleaners. In fact, I've got about 26 machines in this room. So if we go around them all one by one. The uh, first one we got here is the Sibo uh, X4 Extra. Uh, can I pan out the video? No, I can't at the moment. So it's not a very good camera. But you can see the X4. There's been a review done on that one. Coming around here, we've got the Sibo Felix Rosso, which is uh, also a very nice bag machine. Uh, that one's from 2014. As I see most of these cleaners here, I haven't. I bought about a good three, four years ago now. So. I've had them all for quite some time. The next one here is a uh, Vax Mac 9. Now I've sold some of my Vaxes. I don't have any um, anywhere near as many of those as I originally had because I just think Vax is a sack of shit to be honest. Um, the amount of problems I've had with them I'm just never going to buy a Vax again. But that one happened to be quite a nice one. It's based on an Electrolux AEG design that one I believe. Uh, then we've got a Hoover Pure Power. Uh, I think this is the PU2110 or something like that. And that one's the, yeah, 2100 watt version of that. That one's, uh, I bought that in 2014 or 2013, just before the, um, the EU ban came into effect. Next to that, we've got the, um, the Miele S7. It's the um, auto care model with the display on the top and the headlights on the bottom. Uh, the Power Plus, automatic height adjust, and there has been a video done on that one on my channel. What have we got here? This one is the um, Hoover Turbo Power, not the original one, this is the bagless one. Um, it's actually quite a good machine this is, as long as you've got big arm muscles, because it can be very, very difficult to push round. But nevertheless, the cyclones don't get clogged, and it really does agitate the carpet quite well. Next to that is my Miele S6220 cat and dog. That uh, is uh, also featuring my, on my channel. I've done a video on that one. That's a nice cylinder with the uh, turbo brush head attached. And uh, next to that we have got a Dyson. It's the only, no I haven't, I've got another Dyson down here actually. Some of them are in the loft. I haven't got many in the loft now, but the other Dysons are in there because I don't tend to use them. But this is the, this is my favourite one. I'm never going to get rid of this one because I love the colour scheme. It is the DCO4 limited edition. Uh, I believe this was done for a charity at the time. It, might, it wasn't cancer and leukaemia in children. It might have been the, oh I can't remember. Uh, but there we go, that's the DCO4. Next to that is a very, very strange machine, which I don't know very much about. I, uh, I've stripped it down and determined that it was made in about 1998 from the date stamps on the, on the parts on it. It's very, very similar to a uh, Panasonic. Uh, it's a Sanyo 1200 watt, um, seven stage filtration. Um, and it's got the dust indicator on and a power control as well, which varies the motor speed and the suction which I thought was rather a very good machine. Seven stage filtration on there and automatic height adjust. Uh, it has got a uh, bag inside, being a, obviously a bag cleaner. And um, if you look at the back of it, I'm not sure how good the lighting is in here, it might not be terribly wonderful. Can we get it on top of here in the, in the light? Yeah, that's the uh, the back of the cleaner there. Again, it's not a very long cable on there. There's no automatic cable rewind on it. Uh, that's the uh, number. It's made in Mexico, which is unusual because uh, usually it's American cleaners that are made in Mexico. And it's SCA7AX, uh, 1200 watt. Uh, there we go. So that one there. I haven't done a video on that one before because obviously it's not very common. I doubt that many people would have anything like this. It's got the power switch on the side. The closest I think it looks like is the uh, the Panasonic. Again there's no um, handle release on it, you just put your foot on there and then you recline it back. So that's the Sanyo. Next to that is uh, Hoover Pure Power. This is uh, an older one, this is the U3330 which is uh, 1300 watt 
and that one's got the bag full indicator on, rather a nice machine, I've restored all that one, sh shined it all up. I've got the, um, even got a genuine Hoover bag in it, look how about that. You see I, I do treat my cleaners. Next to that we have a, um, I think this is the U2107, this one I bought from um, Alex uh, Pneumatic Vacuum, he's got a channel on there, he does a lot of pneumatic cleaners, lives up in um, in the north, uh, well, Manchester, uh, and I bought this off him some time ago, uh, he bought it brand new in box, so it's hardly ever been used, that one hasn't, that is pretty much brand new. And that might not be original bag, but the belt's in the bottom. Uh, you can see just the belt in there. I'd never store upright cleaners um, in the collection with the belts attached. This it tends to make the belts stretch over time, and the next time you come to use them, like I did with that Sanyo there, now the brush all won't go around properly on carpet, so again it needs a new uh, new belt, and I put a new one on three years ago, but because it's sat not being used, the belts have stretched, and now it's useless again. So it's a top tip that is, if you've got a large collection of uprights, especially ones with stretch belts, always remove them when they're not being used. It's a little bit of effort, you've got to take the base plate off, take the belt off the spindle, but do it and the belts will last you longer. Right next to that is another Turbo Power. This is the Turbo Power 1000. There has been a video done on this one. This one's um, the um, AutoSense model. Turbo Power 1000 there. And next to that we have got, this is the U2462 I believe, which is just uh, the basic Turbo Power 2, with the bag full indicator there. Um, it's very, very similar to the one next to it, made around about the same time in 1994. Uh, obviously it's not an early model which had the piston indicator, but I believe Alex has got one of those. This is a pneumatic vacuum again, because he does love his um, Turbo Power 2s and 3s. Next to that we've got a Turbo Power 1, this is the bog standard, dead common, Wedgwood Green, I think it was in the Argos book, it's dated from 1988. I've done a video on this one as well, um, it's a superb little machine, no tools on the back as it's obviously one of the basic models from early on. Uh, right now, what, uh, I'm sorry about the lighting in here, I haven't got any more lights, no, it's actually yes I have, there's one over here, so if I just turn... No. Yes, come on, that's it. Nothing will make much difference though. Uh, we've got the Dyson DC15 here, which is uh, also had a video. That I bought from brand new in 2006, so that's 11 years old now. Doesn't get used anymore because I obviously want it to stay working because they are not going to be very common in years to come, the DC15. It was the first ball and uh, I think people went mainly for the DC14. And then obviously the, the 24 and the 25 are a lot more popular than this because it was big, heavy and bulky, the 15. But I still like it though. I think it's a pretty good Dyson. Right, going behind here we've got the... Uh, it's terrible light. This is the Electrolux 560. Uh, I've done a video on both of these two. The other one's the 500. That was the original version, the 500. That one's dated from 1973. The one here is the 1983 model, so there's 10 years difference between these two, but you wouldn't really think, would you, looking at them, they're pretty identical, apart from the colour, but there's 10 years difference. Uh, what have we got now? This is the Hoover Senior Ranger, uh, one of my favourite cleaners, because my parents had one of these when I was a child. Um, I've done a, a review on this one on my channel, so I won't go on about it too much on this little video here. We've got the Hoover Junior. In fact, there's another one there as well in the corner, if I can get out of the light, so I'm not shading it. Um, so we've got the 1970 version there, which I've done a video on. That's the 1346A. And the one in the corner is the 1346... It's the original uh, from 1967, March 67, uh, what they called the Phase 1, because it had the orange cover plate, the pumpkin front, and a few months after that it just became brown for the rest of the run, and they ran between 67 and 70, and then the 1346A with the height adjust came out after. <clears throat> so we've got uh, Kirby again here, this is my G4. 
This one I'm not currently using at the moment because I took the tech drive out of it and put it in my other one in the G7. So this one's not got a very good tech drive now. It uh, tends to clunk and click and make a lot of noise. It's a shame really. I would like another tech drive but I'm not paying 100 quid for one. It's ridiculous. There's uh, Kirby hoses on the top. Uh, they've got plastic basic hose there for the later ones and that's the one for the Heritage one underneath which is the older version. Next to that we've got my Miele. Uh This is my Miele Revolution model with the uh, big SEB236 I think it is. Power head on there with the light on the front. That's got the, the controls on the handle there. This uh, was quite unreliable when I first had it. The uh, connection here kept, uh, when you were twisting around here, it kept turning the cleaner off all the time when you were using it. So I had to disassemble all this and clean all the slip rings and contacts. Uh, and occasionally still now it, it cuts out. So it's not one I use very often, but it does still work. And again, it's the S5 version of that. I apologise for the lighting. I haven't really got much light in this room, as I say. That is my Electrolux uh, Powerlight Pet Lover, and uh, that is also an extremely good cleaner. I absolutely love that machine as a bag machine. It's one of the cheapest machines that you could have bought back in the day. It was about 60, 70 quid. They became the AEG version shortly after. But that's uh, also, I've done a video on that, the uh, Electrolux there. There's an old air conditioning machine next to it, which I've had since 2001. Um, very useful in the in the uh, in the summer when it gets hot. I've got another one of those in my bedroom. Oh, what's that on there? A Miele head. Oh well, that's one of the that's the ones uh, one of the ones off my 6220 cat and dog. That one. That's the what they're called the fiber tech head. And in my opinion, it's not a very good one because it's only got one row of bristles and brushes along the front. So I don't tend to use that. I don't think that's a very good head. And we all like good head, don't we, Roger? <laughs> Right, uh, here are my two other seniors. Now, that one there, that's the one I, I robbed the uh, headlight out of. That's a 1964 version, that. That's quite an early one. And it's, it, it works, but it's very old and rather rather tatty, that one. So I, I just put the plain blanking headlight from the one downstairs in here, and there's no headlight in that now. And that was a bit of a game to do, because uh, trying to get the headlight out when it's uh, actually welded in. Uh, or pressed in with a rivet, proved rather difficult, but I did it anyway. And that's got a uh, blue Hoover bag on the back, which doesn't really match. There's another 652A um, here, which is a slightly later model than that one, but they've both got the, the side foot switch on there. And uh, that one again, I had to put a new cable on that, it's a Dyson cable because the old one was dangerous. That one I have actually done a review on, on my channel, that's 652A. Um, the other ones, um, as I say, that works okay, but the carbon brushes are very short. That tends to be my parts machine, that one does. Uh, what's that? Oh, that's a brush roll out of, a, um, out of that green pure power. And unfortunately, this one is uh, rather knackered. The brushes on it are very, very frayed and very badly worn. And some of them, particularly that one there, there's absolutely no bristles left on it, look. So that one is pretty, pretty worn out. So what I did, I had to put a new brush roll in the green pure power. So, unfortunately, they, when you buy these things, then they're not always perfect. Um, here is some of my bags, Miele bags there, the high clean bags. And then I've got my other box of bags there and belts. It's When you have a large collection like this, you need to have a fair few bags. There's some Kirby bags up behind it there. What's those there? Oh, they're the Type 2 for the Heritage. The Heritage 1, those are, which I bought some time ago. And then in there, there's more tools for the Henry. And up there, we've got the tools, tool kit for the Kirby Heritage 1. There's more bits and pieces up there in the top. And there's a, the tool caddy there from the G4. So uh, there's a turbo brush brand new in there for the Miele. Underneath is the tools for the turbo power. I'm just thinking now where are the tools for the um, the junior? Oh they'll be around somewhere. I can't just remember where I've put them now at the moment. Right so those are the ones in the bedroom. Ah not forgetting Henry. Here he is down here. Look 
<laughs> yep. I, I almost forgot him. Hello, Henry. Yeah, there he is. Look, he's looking rather forlorn there with his hose wrapped round his head. That's a HVR 200A from. Uh, what's it? What's the year on that one? Uh, 2011, week 20. That one is. Yeah. They're, they're, they're the models that uh, the auto save boards were failing on. They, they weren't terribly long lasting those, so they changed them. Uh, obviously, that's a that's a 1200 watt motor. There's a uh, aero brush floor head there and the pipe for the Henry. Okay, we go through into my bedroom. Never seen before, but. Uh, in this cupboard here, if I just turn on the light, I'm not sure how much it's going to be able to get in here. Right, that is the SIBO Airbelt uh, K3 um, Volcano, which I keep boxed up. That one there, I need to do a review on that one at some time because that's um, that's rather a nice uh, cylinder. That's uh, Siemens. Z6, and that is a two and a half thousand, sorry, 2500 watt vacuum cleaner. There, we've got uh, two more Miele S8s. One's the box for the Medicare, but I've got a standard black uh, S8 in there, and underneath is another S8. That's my, uh, I think it's the S8730, that one with the remote control power head. I don't use them, they're kept boxed up because I want to preserve those. Okay. Then we're going to go up into the loft. There's a few up here. These are the ones that I have for long-term storage. There's not that many in here now because I have got rid of some of them. But there's the loft light there. As I say, it's a, it's a very old house this is now. So it's a bit scruffy and tatty up here. So without slipping off the ladder. This, there we go, you see. I'm climbing up into the loft. Things I have to do. So up here we've got another Kirby, that's a Heritage 1, that unfortunately didn't have the right bag on it when I bought it, that is a Heritage 2 bag, which I'm sure most Kirby owners would know, and yes that, that's the Heritage 1, uh, this is what they call the Sani Emptor, that one is with the peg on the side that allowed you to open the bottom, and they were used mainly on the shakeout bags, the one downstairs has got the same. Um, that's the Power 6 PET VAX. That's again hardly ever been used, still in its box. Then we've got a, let's just let me turn it round into the light. A Hoover Turbo Power cylinder cleaner. Let me see that one there in its box. I haven't done a review on that one, maybe I will one day. It's not been too bad a cleaner, but it's, it's rather noisy. Um, this one's a Dyson DC07. It's one of the earlier ones. That's the, I don't know how much this camera's gonna get of here being in the loft. It's the brush control from 2002, I think this was, or 2001. Because it's not made in Malaysia, this one's made in England. So it will be one of the very, very earliest ones. Then we've got um, one of the Vaxes, that's the Air 3 Agile. Uh, I've done a video review on that one. Uh, we've got the Vax Mac Air here. This is the the Mac Air. I'm going to stand around this side and I'll get it better in the light because I've only got a small fluorescent light up here. Uh, yes, that's the Mac Air Reach. That one's 2012, I do believe. Um, there's the brush roll there. This was the one that I had the problem with with the um, the bin seal, which is that basically the rubber seal at the bottom of the bin wasn't meeting on the bottom of the bin door properly and it was drawing dirt in through past that seal up into here and then let me just put that down so what I had to do what was happening is that this entire thing here was lifting up as it was in use lifting the entire of the cyclone assembly up towards the suction and it was pulling that away from the bottom of the uh, the case there. So what I've had to do was to actually stick sellotape all around here, all the way around, to sellotape that onto the case to stop this from rising up. Because that isn't a tight enough fit in there when the lid's on. 
but basically that's why it's up here because quite honestly I think this machine's absolutely crap the reliability of it. Pardon me for the camera for you over there while I just put that away. Right. Oh and also on here, these end caps here have a tendency on these Metamac air reach because they weren't glued on properly to pull themselves off. They would fall off the hose when it was in use and the same went for that end as well. You'd be using it to go up the stairs and suddenly that would pop off the end of the hose. So I've had to super glue that onto there. Dreadful machine in terms of quality. It's one of the early ones. Uh, then we've got my Bissell. There it is. That's the um, Clean View Pets Plus Cyclonic. I've also done a review on that one. It's a good cleaner for picking up, but lousy filtration. That's why it's in the loft now. What I've got here, this one's Dyson DCO3. Yeah. Yes, I have done a review on that one. One of Dyson's earlier machines. What's this? Um, that's the Vax Mac Zen. Again, another one I've done a review on. It was a cheap bargain buy at the time, so Mac Zen Pet there. So I decided to have that, and that's just still in its box. We've got a um, second Hoover Pure Power there. I actually bought two of them, and it's a damn good job as well because this one broke. And if I turn it over, the problem with this is that the uh, carriage wheels broke off it. The uh, peg that fits into here actually snapped off and then the wheels wouldn't stay on the bottom. Okay, so this one now has become a parts machine. There's no brush roll in it because that's on the green one downstairs. So I basically rob bits off this now if I, if I need them for the pure. And again, that's the hopeless mechanism there. I'm trying to pull it up and it's snapped back. So that's the Another one of those. This is the um, Hoover Whirlwind there, which is another bagless one, a cheapie that I got on special offer. Can't remember where I've done a review on that, I might do in the future, but that's there. And then over there, uh, we've got that hopeless, hopeless, hopeless Vax. That's the 800, 750 watts uh, energised pulse pet, and it was lousy. And then finally, the last one in here is this uh, Hitachi Powerhouse, which I might do a review on in the future. Okay, uh, so that's uh, that's just about all of them, I think. I can, I just, oh, there's 